letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. It's called 2 Corinthians. It's the fifth chapter, as we call it. A few verses here about who you are. I want to think with you about who you are today. Who are you? Turn to somebody and say, who are you? Okay? And I'll tell you, before the service is over, I'm going to give you the answer. But you can say it back to them, all right? Of who you really are in Almighty God. Well, first of all, in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, I'm going to pick it up here in the 17th verse. A uh, very familiar uh, passage, but uh, there's a part of this that I want to emphasize today in a message uh, that I've entitled, We Are Righteous Soldiers, okay? It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Him through Jesus the Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, not in putting their trespasses on to Him, and has committed to us the world of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors, okay? That's a word you got to hold on to. That's who you are. You're an ambassador. You're something else. I'll let you know in a minute, okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We employ you on Christ's behalf of reconciled to God. And then this last verse, hold on to this last verse. For he, for he, speaking of, of, of God Almighty, Jesus himself, for he made him, God made Jesus, okay? For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Think about that. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Here's a psalm before I bring you this message that we are righteous soldiers. I want you to think about the psalm and the words of the psalm. Uh, Kathy penned this psalm. She wrote this psalm. Think about the words that the Lord led her to write. And then think about your life as a righteous person in Jesus the Christ. Faith, hope, and love, the battle's yours, but the 
You are in God's army, okay? Or you could even say maybe if you want to. All right? <laughs> God's army. He has an army that He's set forth in this world. And you and I are a part of that army. And I was thinking the other night as I was just, I was just praying about this service. I thought, you know, somehow I want to get across that we that are gathering here, whether you're in this room or watching at home or whether you're listening out days later by audio or something, that we're all a part of the army of God. And that we did not, you know, a few years ago, they did away with drafting people into the army and the navy and the marines and the coast guard. Who got any about? The Air Force, okay, you gotta keep everybody in here. So. We all, you enlisted, didn't you, David? You enlisted? How many here enlisted into armed forces in our, for our country? How many of you enlisted? Okay. Was there anybody in here old enough to be drafted? Anybody get drafted? No. Did you? Hey, praise God, that's the only way they got me too, all right? So. No, I just didn't have the opportunity. But anyway, so some of you older people know about the but it's enlistment, isn't it? I was, so I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know, we that are in God's army, we have enlisted into that army. We may not have realized it, just as some of you didn't realize what you was getting into when, when you enlisted in the army, the navy, the air force, or whatever. In other words, you may not have knew all the circumstances that were going to take place or all the situations you're going to have yourself into, but you enlisted. I enlisted when I was 13 years of age. I gave my life to the Lord. I was saved, born again, redeemed, whatever terminology that you want to use. How many of you here remember when you gave your life to the Lord? How many remember that? Okay. Do you know you enlisted? You enlisted into His heart. I wasn't taught that at that young age. I wasn't. I just knew that I'd given my life to the Lord, and most of you probably also. All you realized was you was going to live forever. You was going to go to heaven because you had given your life to the Lord. You, they may have called it being saved in your church. They may have called it being born again. They may have called it just going into the church, whatever it was. But what happened was you became into a right relationship with God through Jesus the Christ. You became right in God's eyes. And you enlisted. You enlisted not just as an individual, but you enlisted into the body of believers. Different names over the doors, perhaps. Different denominations and things of that sort. But the common denominator and what it's all based upon was Jesus the Christ. No man comes to the Father but by Jesus. So when you gave your life to God, through Jesus the Christ, you enlisted into an army. An army that wouldn't just sit around. I liked your song, David, about just don't be comfortable. Not just being comfortable, sitting back and saying, I'm a Christian, I'm going to wait until God takes me home. No, you enlisted into an army. And I think maybe we have to emphasize that more in our churches today. I'll just speak for us. I want to emphasize it more in my own life. I didn't just... I just didn't give my life to the Lord so I could go to heaven. I gave my life to the Lord so I could be a part of the family of God. That I could be a part of this army that would go out, put on the armor of God like your song said, and go out and truly win the spiritual battles that we're into. Let me tell you, that's what we face. is a spiritual warfare. And when you enlist into God's army, He will give you the equipment. He'll give you the armor to wear for your protection. And He'll give you the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, that you can use as the weapon as you go through this wicked, terrible world that wants to tear you down, that wants to hurt and harm you. I want to tell you, we're in an army. And you enlisted. If you're here and you haven't enlisted, hey, enlist today, all right? I want to tell you the benefits are good. Glory to God. Yes, there's may, it may be that there's going to be some tough times in it, but you're going to have tough times out there in the world. You might as well do it in God's army where you know who wins the battle in the end. God wins. It's already done up on the cross. So I believe that God is telling us today that we need to realize that who we are in Christ Jesus. 
But that goes back to this thing. I said, you know, you can call it being saved or born again. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But it's becoming in a right relationship with God through Jesus the Christ. You're in right standing with God. And let me tell you something. If you're not in right standing with God, you're going to be left standing. Just let that soak in a little bit. Right, left. Right or left standing in the end. Okay? So God is saying to us today, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're in right standing. You're the righteousness of God. You're, you're upright. I look at the dictionary. What does righteous mean? It means upright. You're upright with God. You're also keeping the morals and the integrity and the characteristics of one that has brought you upright, and that's Jesus the Christ. You're going to live by the Word of God. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to live in the Spirit as you and walk in the Spirit as you live in the Spirit. All these things come together for you and me as we have enlisted into God's army. We are the righteous soldiers of God. We are soldiers in this army. We are out there to battle the everyday battles of life. Realizing that the victory is ours because Jesus gave it to us on the cross. But we are still to walk the walk. We're to talk the talk. We're to live the life. And we're to live that Christian life everywhere we go. Because we're in God's army. And not only that, not only as individuals, but all those people that you looked at and you said earlier in the, in the service when I asked you to say, you know, who, who are you? You're a part of that army. If they have enlisted along with you, then they're a part of that army with you. And you've got to help protect them. You've got to pray for them. You've got to be there to support them. You've got to be there to lift them up. And they've got to be there for you as well. It is an army. It is a family. It is a working of God in this world today that the world cannot accept through anyone else or anything else except Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So it's through Jesus Christ that you can listen. So I pray that everybody says, listen, if you haven't listened, Let's get down to what the one thing in that song really said to us. And that is that we are prayer warriors. The tool that God has given us, the greatest weapon that God has given us to use against the world, to use against those things that come to tear you down, is prayer. We're to be prayer warriors. I like the way your song started off, uh, Kathy, when it said, I'm on my, in the middle of the night, when something doesn't seem right, I'm on my knees praying. I know that's not exactly the way it went, but anyway, uh, that's the way I would say it if I was going to say it, all right? In other words, you, you, you will hear from God. You may be walking down the street and you hear from God. You may be asleep in the middle of the night and God wakes you up. But there's a time when we need to be putting that tool, that instrument, that, that weapon, if we want to call it that, into action, and that's prayer. We are soldiers of the Lord. We are called to be prayer warriors. And God wants us to be praying one for another. God wants us to use that tool called prayer that we might be able to establish this wonderful army, putting it all together. You know, sometimes we have to go through boot camp. Sometimes in the beginning, it seems pretty tough. You want to give up. You say, I can't make it. I'm here to tell you you can make it. I'm here to tell you that with the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can get through that enlisting part and get into the, the training that is necessary. And you know, I never stopped training. Been saved since I was 13 years of age. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to be that prayer warrior. I'm still learning how to be that soldier of the Lord. That's what army's all about. And we need, and this has nothing to do with you, okay, brother? But we need to keep enlisting. Enlist over and over again. When you think, when you think that you can't go anymore for God, or you can't do anything else, or maybe you've even convinced yourself you've done it all already. Somebody else can carry the load in the army. Somebody else can take that position. I'm here to tell you, re-enlist. Because God is after every one of us to march to the very end. We don't march and we, we don't march and quit, but we march until the very end. And that's what you and I need to be doing. Now, I want us to exercise in this service today something. I want you, first of all, to know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Turn to somebody and tell them you're the righteousness. That's what you are. Turn to somebody else. You are the righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. I don't say that. The Word says that. I only repeat that. 
For it says right here, For He who made Him, when God made Jesus the Christ to come in this world, He made one who knew no sin. His name was Jesus. He took that sin of yours and mine on the cross, that it could be wiped away as far as the east is from the west when we enlist into His army. When we enlist into His army, we're saved, born again, redeemed, whatever terminology that takes place, then all that sin is washed away as far as the east is from the west. God says, I don't even remember those sin anymore, that sin any longer. And He comes and He lives in our lives, but we live in the army. And He says, I want you to be that prayer warrior. I want you to be the one that will pray for this world to change and be more like Jesus and less like the devil. I want you to pray that those loved ones that you have given up upon have ever been enlisting into the army. That they, today they would enlist into the army. That your prayer would be that powerful. When we get on our knees and pray, so to speak, you don't always have to be on your knees. You can be driving down the road in that car like we talked about. And you can be praying. You can be praying right there for somebody. But God is saying to you and He's saying to me, it's time that we realize who we are. We are the righteous soldiers. We are righteous soldiers. We've been made right in God's eyes. Oh, we have shortcomings. We're not perfect. But we certainly have enlisted into an army that God will make perfect in the end. And praise God. He's coming back for that army. The Scripture says that, doesn't it? It says He is raised up. In Ezekiel 37, says, And He raised up and is an exceeding great army. Remember that? We went out into the battle, into the battle for the uh, uh, the dry bones, and they all come alive. That's what we're going to be doing as the army. We're an exceedingly great army of God, and we're to go out there. Don't stay comfortable in your seats, like like Nathan's song said. But you get out there and you say, "I'm going to do all I can do for the Lord, because I am His righteous. I've been made right in Him. I am now going to be a soldier of the Lord. I'm going to be a righteous soldier." Will you pray for the needs and believe as a soldier? You have a right to do that. Some people never pray about things because they don't think that they're good enough to pray. I'm going to tell you something. Good has nothing to do with what you are. It has to do with who you belong to. And if you've enlisted into the army of God, you belong to Almighty God. And you're the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. I want you to pray for every need that you know. Every person that's lost in his sin. Take that tool called prayer. And as we end this service, say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe that we're going to victory. Because I'm not going to just come and pray as somebody that says, well, that's my duty. I'm going to pray as a soldier. I'm going to pray as one who is righteous in God's eyes. I've been made right, and I've enlisted into an army that's going to win the battles, but we've got to do it together. And if you have a need in your life, bring your need here. I guarantee you that God will be with you, and maybe even other prayer warriors will be here to pray for your need. Will you come and pray right now? Let's pray together. And then you just get up out of your seats. Those of you that are watching, wherever you're at, get on your knees, as Kathy Song said, and pray and believe that you can be that prayer warrior. Pray for the situations that you know of. Pray for people. Pray for your own life. Prayer is the key. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for prayer. And I simply say, Lord, may we be willing to be soldiers for you today. May we be the righteous soldier that you'd want us to be. Some of us need to come and just pray about that. Say, Lord, help me to be that righteous soldier. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to the hearts of every person and may we pray. Amen and amen. Just get up and just come and pray. Pray for others. Pray for yourself. Pray for our nation. I'll tell you, we're an army. Army of God. We're soldiers. I still want to thank you, Lord, for being who you are, for coming to the rescue of someone who's drifted far, for calling me to be your child and for calling me to serve. Lord, the way you blessed my life is more than I deserve. Thank you.
struggling to find themselves in you. May they come to know the love of God. May their eyes be set made to see. Give me the opportunity to share the truth that sets them free. And may you Jesus is Savior, if you've never enlisted into that, into that army, it's a very simple task, is to believe. He that believes shall be saved. It's a hard belief. It comes deep down from your heart. It's not a head understanding, but it's a, it's a belief in your heart. I'm just going to ask, if you, if you are saying, you know, I do want to enlist, I don't know what the, I don't know what the boot camp's going to be like. I don't know what the, the, some of the battles are going to be like. I'm going to tell you something. They'll be easier than in the world. Would you pray this prayer with me? The scripture says to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Again, you don't have to intellectually with your head understand it. But by faith you take it. For we're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. I'm going to ask everyone in this room to pray out loud with me. Those of you that are watching, pray this prayer. Let us know that you prayed it when you do that. Just say, Dear God, I turn to you today in the name of Jesus, your Son, my Savior. I'm confessing Him as my Savior now. 
For I believe in my heart that He died on the cross for me. Shed blood for my sin. Conquered death and sin. When He opened up the grave and came alive. I confess that with my mouth. And I say to Him, Jesus, come in my heart. Make me righteous. I want to be a soldier. I'm enlisting today. Sign my name on the Lamb's Book of Life. Because I'm in today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Everybody look up at me for a moment. I believe that you are a soldier if you have enlisted into God's army. And I pray that as you leave today, that you'll go out into this world realizing that you've got a tool. A tool that will be exercised in love, yes, but a tool that can penetrate any sin. A tool that can penetrate anyone's life and it's called prayer. Be a soldier of the Lord. Be a prayer warrior. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as we go our separate ways, we thank you that you've brought us together as the army of God as well as the family of God. And I pray that every family be represented, Father, by someone in that family that's enlisted, that they can share it with others. For, Father, we have met here in the precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And in that name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you all. Give Jesus a clap, all three, and say thank you.